Hello everybody, Dinky Doo, it's just me, Scotty McClue, the world's top broadcaster, the first lord of the internet, and of course the world's most humble man. Welcome, welcome, welcome to a quick pop-up here. Now there's a reason for the pop-up. I was on a social media site the other day, and uh, there was a discussion about the royal family. And there was something that a member of the royal family had done that was really, really touching. It was very, very wonderful. It was uh, at a time of difficulty and tragedy for people. And um, they'd visited them with their presence. And some of the comments that I came across were absolutely shocking. And a lot of them were from Scottish people, which shocked me even more, because the Scots have a worldwide reputation for understanding people regardless of their background, their race, their age, their creed, their colour, etc. And the Scots do not buy in to the class system. So I found this very, very strange. And I thought to myself, at the moment, there's an excellent poll if you're looking for Scottish independence. Now, I'm apolitical, so I'm not one way or the other. I'm not a member of any political party, and I don't make political points. So there we are. So that's the first thing I would say to you. But this is not a political discussion. This is about the future of the monarchy and an independent Scotland. Now, the one thing I can say is that the enemies of independence for Scotland at the moment are people who say they're looking for independence for Scotland, but they're anti monarchist. Now, why this has happened, I don't really understand. Because in the modern monarchy, which is an outstanding institution and very, very, very good for the four countries that it represents, I don't understand what the problem is. So I thought I'd put the record straight and clear up one or two little myths that were coming out in the um, the posts full of opprobrium, which, uh, which just should should not happen. So there we are. Should Scotland ever get its referendum and gain its independence? The position of the monarch should not alter in the slightest, right? Her Majesty the Queen will still be the head of state because independence is a political and economic thing the royal family, the monarchy are apolitical, all right? So there's a huge difference between the union of the crowns and the union of the parliaments. Independence would split the parliaments. You never, ever split the crown. You can't. It's our symbol of authority. So the queen would still be the monarch. And then you hear people put forward, ah, but the people are sovereign in Scotland. The people are sovereign as far as the parliament goes. From a parliamentary point of view, the people are sovereign because they have been granted sovereignty. There's no, it's not legally binding. There's no legal document or anything. They've been granted sovereignty by her Majesty the Queen. So they are who remains the ultimate sovereign. She is our sovereign lady. So they are now, regardless of your background, your creed, your color, whatever, uh, the Queen is the Queen of all the citizens of the United Kingdom, which includes Scotland, England, Northern Ireland, and Wales, which is a principality under the care of her son, the Prince of Wales, and the heir to the throne. Oh, but the cost, the cost that these people have cost us, oh, the cost, no. The monarchy is virtually self-financing. And all it costs you is a few pennies. Sometimes, depending on how good things are going, 50 pence, sometimes 60 pence, something like that. Also, you can't explain to some people that the monarchy is excellent value, fantastic value, brings in about 600 million pounds a year in trade and in tourism and costs very, very little. Her Majesty the Queen's office and the heir to the throne's office are financed through the two duchies, Lancaster and Cornwall. So, not a problem there at all. There we are virtually self-financing and brings in a fortune. 
all right? So, then, oh, they're in their palaces, their palaces, they think they're somebody. No, the royals are human beings. They're the same as you, and they're the same as me. They're ordinary people, but they're doing an extraordinary job, right? They're the head of state. Now, that is fantastic. Very, very good. I mean, since we've come out of Europe, we've virtually surrendered everything. We've given up our seat at the big table in our trading block and what have you. We've, we've given up our seat uh, along with our dear friends and allies, Germany. We uh, had 30% of a market of 510 million people, 28 countries. That's gone. All that we've got in this country, or in the four countries that are making up the United Kingdom at the moment, is our sovereignty. So the, the monarchy is the most valuable and pivotal thing that we have got. However, I notice there are anti-monarchists about. Now, what I would say to the anti-monarchists is find out what's wrong with you. Is it ignorance? Is it petty prejudice? Is it chips on the shoulder? Because all of these things are mythical. And rest assured, Scotland will not get its independence unless the monarchy can be assured of their security and position within an independent Scotland. Because the Queen is the Queen of Scotland. Since the crowns were united, Scotland, England and Ireland by a Scot, a Scottish monarch on the throne, 1603. All right. So that's what's happening there. So... You know, a lot of these myths need to be quashed, otherwise it will cause damage for no reason, for no reason, to the independence movement for Scotland. Whichever way it goes, it won't happen if there are anti-monarchists causing damage. So there we are. So that's the first thing. So we have to get that message across. Very, very important. And as I say, I have no axe to grind one way or the other. There we are. No axe to grind. But I am just putting these people wise because there was a terrific amount of ignorance. And there was even argy-bargy when you gave these people the facts. And what it actually said is, remember that if you are anti-royalist, you're anti-Scotland, you're anti-Scottish people, the monarchy is a great Scottish institution. I mean, the Queen herself is 50% Scots. Her mother was 100% Scots. You know, she's the Duchess of Edinburgh. Her husband is the Duke of Edinburgh. Her husband was educated in Scotland. Her son was educated in Scotland, the heir to the throne. Fantastic. Her grandson went to university in Scotland. Fantastic. Wonderful connections. It represents the crown. It represents our symbol of authority, which Her Majesty the Queen is the custodian and the curator. There's no tangible arguments against the monarchy. It's self-financing. It's self-justifying. It doesn't need me or anyone else to justify it. It's free at the point of delivery. So if you have a royal personage come to do charitable works with you, that doesn't cost you. The Queen's an outstanding public servant. She's still putting in a full shift at the age of 94. Her amazing husband and her have clocked up 140 years of public service to this country, to the four countries. The Queen's our sovereign. She's the head of state. Post-Brexit, the monarchy, our sovereignty, our sovereignty, all we have now is uh, that, our sovereignty. There's been a monarch in Scotland for 2,347 years, if you go back to the ancestors of Re, the old Celtic king. There you are. And um, I would say, those whom God hath joined together, let no man put asunder. So if you happen to be an anti-monarchist, whether it's through ignorance or whether it's through misconcept, a lack of understanding, or just you, you, you don't get it, then you need to get your act together if you're hoping for an independent Scotland or even the chance of a referendum that will be decide whether there's going to be one or whether there's not. So there you are. So what I'm saying is, uh, you know, don't 
get it wrong, have a think, ask yourself why you're anti-monarchist, because there's absolutely no reason to be so. Forget the history and everything else, this is absolutely right now. All right, all I'll say to you is uh, we'll catch up soon. This is Scotty McClue saying to every single one of you, dinky-doo.